Just before this year's French Open, Rafa Nadal and Tiger Woods came together on a shoe collaboration for a new colorway of the Nike Vapor Cage 4s. It was a really slick, black, metallic looking shoe. It was hyped up by all the online tennis retailers and Nike alike. When we actually got to the French Open, if you had an eagle eye, you saw that Rafa Nadal was not wearing that shoe. He was wearing something hybrided like the Court Ballistic 4.3 mixed with the Nike Zoom Cage 3. So, what does Rafa Nadal know about the Nike Vapor Cage 4 that we don't? Let's find out. Hey everybody, it's Zach, Tennis Pro Doc, helping you improve your game with science. And today I've got a battle of Nike cages with the Vapor Cage 4 going up against the Zoom Cage 3. And my real question is, what is so great about the Cage 3 that Rafa Nadal feels the need to still use a hybrided version of it versus the all new Vapor Cage 4, which is one of the most hyped shoes out there right now? So of course today I'm gonna to put both of these shoes through my gauntlet of test and really see what the big difference is between the third generation and the fourth generation of this shoe. Now obviously Rafa Nadal is not playing with a stock Zoom Cage 3, he's playing with a custom modified version. Now this photo here is from the US Open in 2018. The photos from the 2020 French Open are under copyright law, so if you wanna check those out as well, I'll leave a link in the description. But the shoe you're seeing here and in the other photos is the exact same shoe, just in different colorways in the French Open and obviously he was using a different tread pattern at the French Open as well. And I'll be referring to this photo and others obviously throughout the video to show you the similarities and dissimilarities between his shoe and the stock model. But just a real quick comparison and contrasting of his shoe versus the stock model. As you can see in this picture, he is not playing with the slipper tongue that's in the stock model. He's playing with more of a three-piece tongue and that tongue is actually a lot longer on his shoes. And although Rafa's uppers is still that same polyurethane and breathable mesh combination, he does not have as thick of polyurethane in the toe box just because he has access to a bunch of shoes so he just doesn't need it so you can keep the weight even further down by not using that really thick polyurethane on the stock models. Now he is playing with the exact same upper otherwise as well as the same heel counter which is pretty interesting. He also has the exact same shank in his shoe as the stock Zoom Cage 3s. Now a big difference is in the treads too. He is not playing with the stock treads, even the stock hardcore treads of the Zoom Cage 3 and as you can see those treads are actually going up over the toe box of his shoe, whereas on the stock version, you do not get that. But of course, the biggest difference between Rafa's Zoom Cage 3s and the ones that you can purchase is that his are made from a custom last. They are built around his foot. And that's pretty important because the stock Zoom Cage 3s, as we'll see in the fit test a little later, are pretty narrow. So we'll be referring to these photos and others throughout the video, so make sure you stay tuned to see more similarities and dissimilarities between his and the stock model. But what makes the threes and fours so different? I mean, there are just countless reasons. Starting in the uppers, the cage threes have this, well, lack of a better word, cage of polyurethane all the way around the uppers. But in the little honeycombs of the cage, you just have mesh. So these shoes are gonna breathe a whole lot easier than the fours will. Number two, it's just a lighter upper. Remember, the shoes are way different in weight. The cage threes weigh only 13 ounces, whereas the cage fours weigh 15.6 ounces. And a lot of that has to do with the uppers. Because if you look at the uppers on the fours, it is just really thick, dense fabric, not a lot of breathing channels in them. Then you also have this wear guard that goes all the way from the tip of the toe, all the way back here to the heel counter. Now that's good for toe drag protection, but it also does just add a lot of weight versus the threes where they just built it right into the upper. But I think an even bigger and more important difference in the uppers is how the laces close. On the threes, you have more of a standard slipper tongue with a little bit of a hybrid three piece with that polyurethane material jutting out. So you are getting a little bit more security. Now Rafa Nadal does play with a traditional three piece tongue and it actually is a bigger tongue. That is one big modification he did make on the threes. However, if you look at the fours, it is this two piece hybrid tongue with these outrigger shoelace eyelets. Now these outrigger shoelace eyelets are not going to tie anything down. You just cannot get a really tight closure. And when you do get that closure, it oftentimes pinches on your fifth metatarsal over here. So I know what this design is. It's designed to vacuum over your midfoot and over the top of your foot. However, when it really comes down to it, it basically just pinches over here and doesn't give you a lot of really good tighter on the medial side. So whereas the cage threes really suck down on your foot foot like a vacuum seal, the cage fours just really have an uneven and unreliable tension. From the durability test with the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, the fours were a little bit more durable on that wear guard layer than were the threes. However, the threes, that DuraGuard layer is a bit thicker than the fours. So you're still getting about equal durability protection for sliding and toe dragging. 
All right, well, as you can see, it has started snowing and we're on lockdown, so no indoor tennis right now. So I came back to cut these shoes open for the teardown. So let's look at the midsole and after the snow breaks, we'll take it back out to the courts for the rest of the video. Now on the midsole teardown, I found a bunch of really interesting differences between the threes and the fours. Number one being in the heel height. Now on the threes, you have a 2.7 centimeter heel height, which is nothing to sneeze at. But on the fours, you have a 2.9 centimeter heel height, which is just massive. And the biggest difference between the threes and the fours on the heel height is that the heel on the fours is all Nike foam. On the heel height on the threes, there is a zoom air unit in there. So a lot of the height on the threes actually comes from that zoom air unit. Whereas on the fours, you have a lot heavier midsole foam in the rear foot, which makes the fours a lot heavier than the threes. Now, the interesting thing is on the threes, you actually have a 1.4 centimeter heel to toe drop. Whereas on the fours, you only have a 1.3 centimeter heel to toe drop. Now I know that seemingly seems like one millimeter, but remember there is a zoom air unit in the four foot of the fours. So when you take that into consideration, the fours just have a much bigger platform feel on them because remember the heel is not going to sink low, right? That's midsole foam. The forefoot will bounce a little bit on you, but as long as that zoom air unit stays buoyant, the fours are just going to give you a lot bigger of a platform feeling. Whereas on the threes, they actually engineered it where the heel actually is going to compress a little bit more and the forefoot's just a little bit more low to the ground. So on the threes, you are going to get a lot more of that low to the ground feel while maintaining some of that buoyancy in the heel and bounce in the heel. That's why I really like the threes in terms of their midsole construction versus the fours. Another big difference is in the shank. On the fours, it's this really thick piece of polypropylene, which actually does still flex a little bit. Whereas on the threes, you have this really thin piece of plastic, which spans four foot to rear foot, like I said. However, this is just as stiff as this really thick piece of polypropylene. So you're getting the exact same amount of arch support from a much thinner piece of plastic, which also keeps the threes a lot lighter than the fours. But the one thing that is 100% the same between the two of them is the heel counter. They both have a really flimsy heel counter, and this just is not great for side to side movement. This is going to make the shoe a little more sluggish. Now on the threes, it's not as big of a deal because it's a much lighter shoe and you are getting stability from other areas. But in the fours, that really flimsy heel counter just makes the shoe that much clunkier. Now the outsole treads of the threes and fours could not be more different. On the threes, you have more of a hybrid herringbone with flat herringbone on the medial side, a big sliding channel, and then more deep herringbone on the lateral side. Whereas on the fours, you just have this linear pattern that mimics the Nike swoosh, which to me is kind of a gimmick because it doesn't really grip anything exceptionally well up here until you get into the toe box where you do get a little bit of a razor pattern. And then same here on the heel where you get this razor pattern. It is really flat. So it will grip a hard court pretty well, almost like a racing skid, but it's not going to give you that really good digging in like the cage threes will. Now you do have sliding channels because it is linear. So it will slide on a hard court. Okay. It just doesn't have that stability and all the gripping options that the three do. Now, the fours definitely do have a lot of outsole material that come over the toe box, which the threes definitely do not. So you are getting a little bit more wear protection on the fours. And even up into the distal tip of the toe box, you have a lot more material coming up over the toe box. And even from the midsole, you have a lot more material coming up over the toe box. Whereas the threes, they base all of their durability on that actual cage. It's just that on the medial side, this midsole foam, if you do slide, is exposed. So it will wear down. Now, outsole durability test of the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper. Neither of these even got a millimeter of damage, barely a scuff with the Dremel. So both of these outsoles are going to last you quite a bit of time. Now the fit of the threes and fours could not be more different. Just look at the shoes when I put them side by side. You can see the fours really are a little bit of a longer shoe. They definitely are a little bit more forgiving in the toe box as well. The fours are gonna fit a wider foot than the threes will. Now I have a two E with foot and on the threes, I'm still trying to break them in at my normal size. So if you are a two E, I would definitely go up a half size on the threes if you plan on getting these. Now, if you are above a two E, I would just look for something else in the threes because with that cage, they're just not going to expand very well, at least on the fours with a little more of this fabric material, it will expand a little bit better. And it is just a more forgiving shoe in general. It is definitely not a wide shoe. So if you do have a wide midfoot or a prominent fifth metatarsal, if you have one of those, you'll know what I'm talking about. It will pinch a little bit because of the lace closure system. So I would say anything above a two E on either of these shoes, because the threes just don't expand. And because the fours are just so bulky, if you have to go up those sizes, the fours are just going to be too clunky for you and the threes are just gonna hurt still. 
However, if you don't have that wide foot and you are just looking for something with a lot of cushion, maybe you have a bad back, hip, neck, spine, ankle, or just arthritis in general, both of these shoes are really good because they do have a very plush midsole, a lot of foam, and the Zoom Air unit that make them really nice on the joints. Now, playing in the threes versus the fours is quite the interesting experience. The threes have that really light, bouncy, tough, resilient midsole, whereas the fours just kind of feel like a lead balloon after you've had the threes on. The threes move incredibly well. They're a little bit more aerodynamic than the fours. I know the fours look more aerodynamic, but the threes just play more aerodynamic. Now also when gripping, going for wide forehands or backhands, the threes have a wider lateral flange than the fours do. So I just felt a little bit more secure making a really big step or taking a big cut in the threes versus the fours. Even though the fours are a much more substantial shoe and they have more guards on the outside of the shoe, the fit and just the design of the last of the threes just gives you that little bit more security when playing than in the fours. And I think where I saw the biggest difference between these two shoes was split stepping. In the threes when I was bouncing, getting ready to return serve, or just split stepping, getting ready for a shot, the threes just felt like clouds. I was bouncing up and down really nice. It felt like they were actually giving me something in return. Whereas the fours, I felt like I had to drag them up off the ground. They were just weighing me down so much. I think that's another big reason why Nadal would want the threes versus the fours. Just lighter shoes, and his game is built all on speed. So why wouldn't you want to go with the speedier shoe? Suicide test, just a perfect comparison of these two shoes. 14.78 on the threes, 15.05 on the fours. Did the test on the fours before the threes actually. And it just shows you the uppers of the threes just more enveloping, a little more secure. The flange is wider. And most importantly, the midsole on the threes just a little bit bouncier. So your first step is just a little bit faster and the shoes just lighter overall. So faster time. Surf test is interesting on the Vapor Cage fours because it has a zoom air unit in the forefoot. So you would think you'd get a really good bounce out of it because the shoe's so heavy, you're only getting 24 centimeters versus 30 in the zoom cage three. And in the distance, test, no surprise, only 68 centimeters in the fours and 76 centimeters in the threes. But if I had to describe these two shoes in one word, the threes would be speedy and the fours would be clunky. And I think right there just shows you why Nadal prefers these to these. And when you're playing tour level tennis, at the French Open especially, you need a shoe that when you're going wide for a ball and when you're retrieving a lot, is going to dig in, allow you to plant, and then get up and go for the next shot. Because a lot of times you're running back and forth on the baseline, right? So with the threes, I really think Nike was just able to fit a lot more features into a much lighter frame shoe versus the fours where they tried to fit in all of this stuff and it just ended up making the shoe clunky, big, and kind of hard to get around. But I will say the fours do remind me of one of my favorite throwback shoes, and that is the Reebok Fig Jam. And every time I see these shoes, I'm reminded of Andy Roddick, because in these shoes, I think they're really good for the big serve plus one player. You know, you're jumping up really high for the serve, a lot of body weight's coming down the shoe, and then you gotta set up for that one big shot afterwards. And I think with all the midsole foam, and how much this shoe envelops you, and how durable it is, I really think for that serve plus one player, these shoes actually are a pretty decent pickup. All right, so I hope you learned as much as I did today about Nike shoe engineering. I thought this was really interesting to comparing these two shoes, especially having a point of reference in the doll for them. So I hope you all have a great day, great night, wherever in the world you are tuning in from. See you next time.